Hello everyone. So in this video, we're going to continue our last uh, episode for the video for the series to uh, create our fact tables here. So as you see here in the, in the control flow, we create our data flow task. Then we go now uh, create this pipeline. And this pipeline, as you see here, there are some lookups on our destination. And as you remember in Paratalon, we have one team up that going to do all the lookups with the tables. However, in SSS, it's kind of different. Not complex, but it's kind of long pipeline, as you see here. So let's start with our data source. In data source, we are connecting our uh, SSIS to staging area, and we are picking the orders detail table. Uh, that contains the order ID, the product ID, quantity, and unit price. And those entities, we are going to make a product between them, and we use uh, the IDs. So when we pick uh, our source here, we're going to make our first lookup. The first lookup here, as you see, uh, contain the order table. And uh, the orders table here contain the order ID, the employee ID, customer ID. So we are going to look up with the order ID of orders table and with the orders details table. And in the columns here, as you see, the order ID, uh, it's matched with the order ID of uh, second table. And what we take as a uh, columns uh, in the right table, we take the employee ID, customer ID, and deliver it and order date. So in the left by default, the table will contain the product ID, quantity, and unit price. In the second lookup here, we are going to join with um, what we call the employee table. As you see here, and there is something I'm going to talk about uh, lookup transform. It's very important. Uh, let's go to columns first. So we are going to look up with the employee ID and uh, employee ID also of the second tab table. But what we're going to take, we're going to take the the surrogate key here, which is employee key, because in our data warehouse and fact table, we have um, the scheme of the fact table contains only surrogate key and the measures. So that's why we are taking this employee key. And in error output here, no, not here in general, um, how to specify how to handle errors. So there are several options here, but we're going to take inner failures. Uh, we don't want a redirect component or whatever. So just ignore failures. Uh, the inner failure here means whenever there are no much output, what we're going to do with the, those uh, data. So we'll just ignore these failures. And I press OK here. We go to the third lookup here. We are going to look up with, I think, a customer. So we connect our um, data warehouse that contains the customer table, a dimension of customer, and we pick our table of customer, and we go to columns. And here, as you see, we match the customer ID and the customer key. And what are, uh, I mean, sorry, we, we use the customer ID and customer ID, we take the customer key. And it's the same process for all the lookup here. However, before we're going to lock up with the time here, there is a problem uh, between the data. So what I did here, I converted all the date of the table orders, <coughs> I think I saw. And uh, what, yeah, it's orders, not order details. Why? Because it contained different type of date. So I converted to database date, which is the, the, the DB date, and just to match it uh, without problem with a uh, time timetable. And if we go here to lookup three here in the columns and here we have the date key uh, that we're gonna take it and what we match we match the order copy of orders I think here with the date because it's the second uh, option because we convert the data here if you remember here if we're gonna take here it's a copy of that yeah this is the alias it's copy of order date we can rename it whatever we want I just let it like that. And finally, the last lookup, we're going to look up with the product here. So we have the product ID here, and we look up with the product ID of the second table, which is the dimension, and we take the product key. We press OK. And finally, we have going to take the derived column, uh, and this component give us the opportunity or give us the possibility to take what we want as columns, and we do uh, what we could create new columns if needed. And here, I create my measures. So I created the revenue and the predicted revenue, which means uh, if the client doesn't pay because the shipment didn't arrive, and this is the total revenue. So in the revenue here, uh, I check if the delivered uh, is one. So I'm going to multiply the unit price and quantity as it's zero. And the same process here in the predicted, I just switch between zero and one. 
So if the delivery is zero, so give it zero, else just multiply the unit price and quantity. However, in total revenue, I ignore this condition and I calculate the unit price in, in quantity here. And finally, we are going to connect our drive column here to our destination, which is the data warehouse using the fact table here. As you see in the mapping here, uh, we have the employee keys and customer key, date key, product key, and revenue predicted, and also total revenue. How or how, I mean, how I managed to create this, I just create a new here, as you saw in the previous videos, and I create the columns that I need and extra. And now I press OK. If I'm going to write, uh, run this prop line here, Okay, it's running, and as you see here, 2,213 2, row. So if we go to our fact table here, and we're gonna select our first rows. Hmm, interesting. There are no rows here. Let me check something. Um, I hope I didn't change anything here. Hmm, SSS data warehouse. Yeah, I made a mistake here. It should be not here, it should be new. Let me check the table name here. Yeah, it should be in data warehouse here, but it's okay. Um, let's check it here, it's okay. Let's go here, what is it? Um, SSIS the data warehouse here. So if we check our table here, this is the fact table one. And here it is. So as you see here, employee key, customer key, and that key, product key, revenue, projected, and total revenue. So, so this is how we fill our first table. Uh, and now we're going to see how to fill the second table. And here in the same process, we are going to create our second pack table and create the package here. And we drag and drop the, the, the data flow task here and double click here as you see here i just created the pipeline here i didn't want to make a video so long because it's easy when you understand how the component works the other stuff it's very easy as you saw in the first fact table we used lookup to contain our uh, to create our joins so it's the same process we create some lookups here uh, first of all we need to connect our data uh, ssis to staging area and take the orders table here um, as you see here for the columns, uh, as you see here, we have the order ID, employee ID, customer ID, and delivered an order date. And the first lookup here is we're going to connect our employee table, and we look up the employee ID and employee ID of the second table. And also we take the employee key here, so we add it to our first table here. And by default, uh, the left table contain those uh, columns. Now the second table, as uh, second uh, Look up, we look up with the customer. It's the same process. We look up with uh, the customer ID and we take our circuit key uh, with us. Now we're going to do the conversion. We convert our date as we did in our fact table here to data database date uh, because the orders table contain a different type of date. It's not, uh, if you're going to see in our, uh, our SQL here, we go to Staging area, give me a second here, I think. Yeah, uh, not with SSS, no, here. Table, and we go to orders here, we go to design. As you see here, the order ID is a virtual. No, uh, not sorry for that. Yeah, it's a daytime. However, in um, the, I think in daytime, uh, let me go to the data warehouse. Here, uh, it's here. Yeah, it's here for daytime here. Design. Sort of data. I think. Yeah, I remember why that happened because SSIS when when SSIS read um I mean read the table it changed automatically uh, the type. I don't know why. I didn't I didn't want to check it, but I just find this kind of uh, small solution here just to convert it. And then we're gonna do our last lookup here. And we look up our, uh, I, I mean, date ID with the, the date, and we take the date key here. Finally, we're gonna use this condition to create uh, our, what we call it, our measure if the data is delivered or not. So if the delivered, it's equal to zero, so it's one. 
else it's zero. And this is the second delivered. So yeah, this is here we could we calculate the total number of orders. I mean how we have uh, how much order we have. So we calculate the non-delivered and we add it to the delivered here. Finally, we connect our uh, pipeline here to our destination, which is the second fact table, and we map our data. How we create this fact table we can create it by SQL query. We can create it here in uh, as a uh, scale manager here, or we can create it here by the new and we create uh, our columns here and name of the table. And now we press OK and we run our pipeline. So as you see here, we have 878 rows added, and it is true. If we go to the fact table here second, we're going to select our top rows. We're going to see that we have the date ID, the employee key, customer key, the number of uh, delivered and non-delivered, and the total of them out here. So yeah, that's it. So this is how we uh, I mean, load our data to the data warehouse. It's kind of different than talent because talent is kind of not easy, but the component are like can one component can do a lot. However, in SSIS, you need to merge different components to create one process. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you had some extra information. And now we thank you so much for watching this and see you in the next project.